Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Tears of the Kingdom, and today we're going to be talking about how to make yourself as overpowered as possible by hooking you guys up with some of the best equipment that this game has to offer. High damage weapons is the name of the game, and with higher damage comes less durability usage, and with less durability usage means you're going to be swimming in overpowered gear all across the board. The thing about this game is that the tiered weapons from Breath of the Wild have been reworked, so the Traveler, the Soldier, the Knights, the Royal, Royal Guard, all of this has been reworked works so that it's less about the damage that they do and more about the effects that they have and combining those effects with the additional damage that you'll get from fusing the materials over in the um yeah all the fuse attack powers all of these are going to be very very useful for unlocking the potential of each weapon meaning that the incremental changes in damage for the tiers won't be nearly as important as finding out ways to bring out their auxiliary effects for example we have the knight's weapon here where you do double damage when you're I in your uh, down to your last heart this can be really really fun to play around with as a high risk reward there's also the royal equipment which basically does double damage whenever you do a flurry rush which is great if you have that kind of play style there's a lot of other things that you can point out as well but generally speaking though making use of these effects and combining them with high attack power fusions will win the day for you you're going to do really really well and today's video is going to be all about explaining that now, whether you are new to this game, or if you are a Breath of the Wild veteran that has 1,000 hours logged into your Switch, you all are going to have something to benefit from today's video, because I'm going to walk you through a pathway that you can farm every time there's a Blood Moon, so that you can get the best equipment every single time they respawn, and this will help pretty much carry you through the game. It's a very, very simple one to follow, but it does require a bit of preparation. I was tempted to try to make this a get powerful equips right after you finish, finish the tutorial. In fact, I've actually manipulated my stamina wheel and my heart to reflect what it would look like when you get off the tutorial. As you can see, I only have four hearts and I have no additional stamina gauge. But uh, that being said though, being prepared is always going to be the most important thing no matter what. You can access this pretty much any time. And that's what I mean when I say right after the tutorial, you can access this method immediately the moment you unlock the parasail, but being prepared is going to be key when you have all of the uh, special shrines and warp points activated, which I'll be showing you guys. So the first thing to do in terms of unlocking things is that we will be getting equipment over at Hyrule Castle. Unlike Breath of the Wild, in that game, you can go straight to Hyrule Castle, get really great equipment, and be on your way. It's a little bit more complicated than that, in which case you're going to be finding equipment inside of Hyrule Castle, and then going out into the world and finding powerful fusion materials to really bring out the best in their potential, as well as a couple of other things that we might find in here as well, which will be useful for your journey. After you do that, it's important to go to a couple of um, warp points. What you want to do is pretty much just make your way south over the Great Bridge of Hylia or glide over it because there's a dangerous monster on the bridge. Make your way over through to the Farron region until you reach the Lakeside Stable. This particular stable has a warp point that is right above it on a cliff. Immediately around this shrine are about 15 bananas that respawn every time there's a blood moon. And around this entire area, there are many, many money bananas to be found. Uh, you definitely want to get those. Get as many bananas as possible. That is going to be extremely important for farming the monsters because it gives you the much needed attack boost. Like I said, more attack power means less durability usage and to be less of a problem. I also highly recommend going to the Rebello Wetland Skyview Tower. Uh, unlocking this one will allow you to quickly get over to a Lionel that is over in this area. Another warp point that's important is going to be west of the Lakeside Stable, which is going to be the Highland Stable. Going to this warp point will basically let you take your horse all the way along this path and then fight against a blue Lionel that you'll find over here. Full disclosure, my enemies are a little bit upgraded because I have some progress in the main quest as well as having killed these guys several times. Um, all of them have upgraded, so this one is going to be a white Lionel instead. So it'll be easier for you guys because you guys only have to fight against a blue Lionel, but for vid today's video you'll see a white Lionel there instead. Another important warp point to unlock is going to be over in Mipha's Court in the Zoro's Domain. Uh, the Ihen A Shrine, you're going to want to go to this one. It is at the top of a waterfall uh, on the Ployamus Mountain. As soon as you get to here, you'll be able to unlock this shrine by throwing a splash fruit over at the wall that is covered in the shrine, that's covered by muck, and then once you get that, you can unlock the warp point, and you can jump off the cliff in the Akala region to fight against the enemy here. 
Then finally, the last one that's very, very important for you to get is this particular shrine, the Joshiyu Shrine, uh, right over by the East Akala Stable. All of these pads that I've taught you about, most of them can be found by the trail, so just follow on your horse and you'll be fine. Follow the map for reference if you need to for this video. The reason why this is important is because there was a well nearby. This particular well contains a fairy, and the fairies will do a lot to help you with your survivability. This also gives you one last chance to cook up whatever banana buffs that you have so that you can fight against the red Lionel that is here, and that's where we're going to be starting out. So I did mention that I wanted to make this a video where you can pretty much get to this as soon as possible, and to prove that it is possible to do this as soon as possible, uh, we're going to be dropping all of my equipment. All these great stuff, it's going to go away. We don't need this. You do not need to do this yourself, but I'm going to do it just for my sake. I'm going to drop all the shields. I won't be needing it. Let's just say the worst case scenario happens that you find yourself in a position where you suddenly broke all of your weapons somehow. This is what you fall back on. And remember, if this is something that you find from a monster, or if it's something that you find on the ground, anything that's not a chest, it will respawn every time there's a blood moon. So keep an eye on that. Every couple of hours, a blood moon's going to happen. Oh, and also another thing I'm going to point out is that I'm going to get rid of my fairies because I want to show you guys that you can, in fact, get some fairies. Be free! Alright, so, of course, we're going to be starting things off. As you can see in the minimap, we are in the lookout point. As soon as it begins, we are all set to go. Uh, like I said, I did reduce all of my stamina so that we only have one wheel. Ideally, you will have more than one wheel of stamina and four hearts so yeah you guys are gonna have much more of an advantage but typically as soon as you go into the air you immediately want to start leaning as hard as you can into this area into the general area of the castle until you're about level with the top parts of like the ring of clouds that you see over there the whole goal is that you want to get to the top of the cliff and honestly the higher up you are the more likely it is that you're going to waste a little bit of energy so we want to make sure that we're just a little bit level but not so low that we end up being forced to climb, because again, I have very, very, very low stamina. Uh, you guys, on the other hand, will have much more than me. But let's just say that you're in the same position as me, you only have one stamina wheel. It wouldn't hurt to go and um, cook up some of the shrooms, stam shrooms, get yourself a little bit more stamina to recover. Other than that though, no need to fret. Slowly just make your way there, don't do anything rash. And as soon as you find yourself on the top of this cliff, we can progress. Now, I did mention that we need to get the banana buffs. The reason why the banana buffs are so important is simply because we are fighting against some high... Well, not really high HP, but the sooner you can defeat these enemies, the more you can preserve your durability. That's the whole idea with that. Uh, another thing to point out, too, is that when it comes to the, um, the cooking the buffs, the best idea that I can think of, if you're just starting out and you don't have any dragon parts or anything like that, uh, one thing I could recommend is get, buying some milks over at the shop that's in Lookout Point. That should be more than enough, too. So four bananas and one milk will give you a long buff. All right. Now, the goal is that we are at the base of Hyrule Castle. And generally speaking, you want to take note of the writing that's on here. Uh, any of this writing, you'll notice that there is going to be some places that you can stand on. So in this case, as you can see over here, we can stand on this particular area because the writing is cut off on the pillar. So that is a goal for us to reach. Try to get as close as possible. Don't worry if you undershoot it, that's fine. As long as you find a flat surface with which you can stand on, you're going to be okay. And if you guys are following this video closely, this is exactly, exactly what you should be aiming for. What you guys are seeing right now. Alright, so Link has found a nice place for him to stand on. Recover some stamina real quick. And go over to your runes, and then uh, select the Ascend. And we're going to try to make our way up. You see that little, little ramp over here? We're making our way to this. This is very, very important. So, what's going to happen is that we're going to walk into it. And the goal is that we are going to try to use Ascent into this space. It's very, very tricky because there's a slight anim uh, there is a slight pause in the animation of Link um, standing. And when he's standing, that's when he can use the Ascension. But if he starts sliding, he's no longer able to use the Ascension. So you got to time it right. That being said, though, like you can easily just recover your stamina very, very quickly. You want to be rapid fire about it, though. So once you're in here, press B to let go, hit L, and then spam the A button. It's okay if you get the timing wrong sometimes. It happens all the time, and you're new to this. You're still learning. 
but then you should be able to worm your way in. And as it turns out, we are directly below Hyrule Castle, and we can just soar all the way up into it. This is so much easier than how it was in Breath of the Wild. Okay, so, now that we're inside the castle, just continue up the cliff. If you're like me, you have low stamina, don't jump, don't rush. You will have enough as long as you just hold up, and you are good. And you might notice that we are in a very, very familiar place for people that have played Breath of the Wild. It's all too familiar, but we are inside of the Sanctum where you fought Calamity Ganon all those years ago. Now, the interesting thing about this that I want to point out, even though this doesn't directly correlate to getting the most powerful equipment in the game, I would like to point out that it is possible, if you, assuming you brought a bow and you bought some fire fruits, you can light up this brazier and this brazier, and this is going to move this statue over to the side, revealing this opening in here. Inside of this opening is going to be a treasure chest containing... Da, 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 the champion's leathers. This is a good defense. Uh, if you guys want, you can go ahead and equip this right now. Uh, but if you haven't, that's okay. I prefer the look on this particular outfit anyway. I love how it looks. But if you want, you can use the champion's leather. They give a high defense bonus. And especially with upgrades, it'll be kind of like the champion's tunic from the previous game. And I love the look of it too, so that's something to point out. Anyways, go up the stairs. You will find yourself the Royal Guard Sword and the Royal Guard Shield. Um, I did mention before that each of the forged weapons have decayed, so they won't have the full benefits of, um, of the damage. They have a significantly less damage than before, but the thing about these weapons is that when they're at their breaking point, they do double damage. Um, double damage the weapon itself, so that's something to take advantage of. But even more important, though, is going to be over here. The apple of my eye, could it be? Absolutely, the Royal Guards Claymore. I love this thing, and it is amazing in this game, and in today's video, you guys will see why. Okay, so there isn't really much else for us to see, but I actually want to point out one thing before we continue. And honestly, getting a vantage point is generally a good idea, because the higher up we are, the more easy it is for us to point out the shrine. And the shrine is basically just a good, very good... Uh, shortcut for us to make, make use of. I'm not going to go into too much detail about the locations of things, simply because I want you guys to explore it and have fun for yourself, but having this uh, will take a little bit of the pressure off as far as just um, getting some good equipment so that you can meet things with courage. Continue making your way up, follow the minimap if you have to, and we are just slowly trying to ascend this tower over here. This is completely optional, you guys don't have to do this, but I, one, there is an item up here that I want to point out, but also there is um, a benefit to just having a vantage point so we can see that shrine. Hmm, can't quite reach that. Ah, uh, here we go. Keep going up. There we go. I was wondering where it was, but I really want to recommend getting this one too. Sorry about the delay. I was trying to figure it out, but now you also need to remember that because I found this on the ground, this will respawn after a blood moon, which is the Dusk Bow from Twilight Princess. Okay, now with that out of the way, what you want to do is try to face to the northeast, then jump off. Keep your eye on the ground for the shrine. The shrine is a very, very important indicator simply because the... Um, the shrine leads directly into the library. The library, of course, very important. A lot of the stuff that you remember from the library is in here. The other thing that's worth pointing out, too, is that compared to Breath of the Wild, the castle is actually a lot less dangerous. Obviously, yes, there is peril. There are some enemies that will try to kill you, but they are much, much easier to avoid this time around. Okay, so going into the castle, you have to be prepared for... Sorry, you have to be prepared for... Uh, keeping your grab available in the Ultra Hand so that you can detect any of the items that are inside. 
So for example, we got ourselves the Knight's Broadsword. The Knight's Broadsword, or the Knight weapons in general, are very, very good, because if you're down to one heart, you do double damage and still maintain all of the durability, unlike the Royal Guard's equipment, which consumes or requires you to consume most of the durability. Now, keep your eyes around on the ground. You also got yourself another bow. You actually don't need to get this many bows. You didn't even really need to get the, the Bow of Dusk, but I just wanted to point out because I love Twilight Princess. But for the most part, though, just uh, search every nook and cranny that you can. Whenever you see a metal box, just lift it up into the air and drop it. You'll either get an arrow or some healing items, like you see. And then, entering into this secret compartment is going to be even some more goodies. So here we got ourselves a Knight's Claymore. Again, the double damage at one heart. Very, very useful. Honestly, you can actually afford to drop some of the Royal Guard Spears if you don't want to use them. The Royal Guard's Claymore is really all you need. In fact, it is worth pointing out too that the Royal Guard's Claymore is probably one of the best uses for high damage uh, fusion, um, fusions materials. So, okay, we're going to pretend that we're kind of on welfare right now. We're just going to use the blue bow coblin horns. I'm going to drop five blue bow coblin horns. Give ourselves some really scuffed gear. Got ourselves the blue, the blue boko blade. Well, let's also do this with the, uh, the broadsword as well. And then the claymore. We've got two more. What are we going to spend it on? Yeah, we'll spend on the... Actually, no, we won't spend on this yet, because there is also the King's Study, which you can find over here. And there are quite a few good items to find. For example, this is a respawning Royal Shield. Love the Royal Shield. Never leave the house without it. Royal Broadsword. Absolutely, I'll take one of those. And this is a piece of armor that you can find as well. Okay, so things are shaping up quite nicely. Uh, we are... Let's see... I'm going to try to fuse, yeah, we'll fuse some more, more of these, just because. Obviously, you want to get the most powerful fusions as possible, but I'm just intentionally nerfing myself for the purposes of the video, that even in the worst of conditions, you can do really, really well. And if you really don't like the fusions, remember, it is possible to undo the fusions at the cost of the material. Blue bow coblin horns are like chump change, you don't have to worry about those so much. Okay, and there's also a Traveler's Clay... Or not a Traveler, a Soldier's Claymore, which may or may not be useful. Uh, I'm going to have it just in case. If you guys want, if you guys are lacking for some weaponry, that is just not a bad idea to embrace that. Not a bad idea to embrace the Claymore, as many of us have at some point in our lives. And then we are going to focus on the one patch that is closest to us and just run across it. Jump if you have to. And then you'll find another respawning weapon, which is the Royal Claymore. This is fantastic. You definitely want to grab one of these. And I don't believe there's anything else. I might miss things. Just like with the Breath of the Wild guide, I missed a few things as well. So keep that in mind. Other than that, though, here's the Boko Blade. I want to wear it out as best as I can. And we have a willing test subject over here. Who doesn't mind if we use it on him? He's going to give us the Steel Lazal Bow. You don't even need to get this many bows. We're actually overstuffed on bows. Because once we start killing the Lionels, we're going to get the most powerful bows in the game. Uh, bows, in general, are insanely powerful. They were amazingly powerful in Breath of the Wild. That is no different here. Here we go again. We're pretty much just trying to wear them out. Trying to wear this thing out. Can I wear it out like this? Hmm. There we go. Okay. 
So, that's pretty much all we really need to do. Obviously, you guys could stick around and glean more equipment if you want, but honestly, that's not very important to us right now. What's more important is that we get out of the castle, and our next order of business is to start upgrading these weapons. We have a lot of scuffed fusions with the, uh, the, blue, the blue bow coblin horns. I would recommend just immediately making your way to Akala, and then getting over to the East Akala Stable, which is east of Death Mountain, and then go to the shrine that is nearby. All right, so now that we are over at the East Akala stable, we'll quickly make our way towards the um, stable in question. Before we do, we want to make a quick little detour into the well. This is going to be our last chance. Well, not last chance, but for me, it'll be my last chance to quickly just gather up whatever resources I can. Like I said, you want to get some bananas, you want to get some milk. And because now that we're in the neighborhood of the uh, stable's well, we can also get our hands on some fairies. There's a rock that you can blow up. Now, I have upgraded, of, I think, like, after beating some dungeons or something. I don't know what the criteria is, but you could actually spawn an additional fairy. But one is all you really, really need. I'll grab another one just in case. And then just use Ascension to get out of here. Yeah, having a fairy is just as well. Even if you have low HP... Uh, you can survive some of the worst of attacks with the help of a fairy, so that's exactly what we're going for here. And you know what? Let's also pick up this wooden shield, because I like how it looks. Okay, now, looking over at our equipment, what do we got? We got a roll of claymore. We definitely want to upgrade this. And as you can see, because the blue boko blade is badly damaged, it now does 78 damage, which is incredibly good. Incredibly good for something that we fuse with the Boko. Uh, what else can we do for weapons? Uh, there's the boss, the boss Bokoblin. We can do that. Uh, soldier Construct? Sure. Okay, let's try fusing some of these. For the boss, bo for the boss Bokoblin, let's fuse it with a Royal Claymore. And then the Soldier's Claymore. Let's go ahead and give the Soldier Construct... This is a very, very motley mix that we got going on, but we're going to make it work, I promise. Okay, so the first order of business now is just to get ourselves a horse. Any horse that you want. The horse is mostly just to get us there as soon as possible. Ooh, but before we get on the horse, I also need to start cooking some things, too. So I did mention some milk. I actually forgot to buy milk. Would you look at that? So what's going to happen is you want to go over to your ingredients, bananas. Uh, I think I have one milk left, don't I? Ah, here it is. So quickly cook this. This is going to be a buff for 4 minutes and 40 seconds. That is a pretty decent amount of time for something that you can buy very, very readily. Other than that, though, just get like whatever high ingredients that you can get honestly going to help out a lot. Uh, 350, oh, sorry, 3 minutes and 50 seconds is also pretty decent. Uh, let's just say if we're like only going to use the raw prime meats. Honestly, just try to cook up as many buffs as you can. Uh, when you have the ability to uh, warp or you get a Traveler's Medallion, for example, it'll be a lot easier. And then for the bow, we are going to use a Seal's Elbow. You could use a more powerful bow if you have one. Steel Lazalbo is quite good for something that can be obtained really, really, relatively easily. And we're going to make our way towards the Lionel now. So, the Lionels are pretty much the same as they've always been. Largely the same movesets, but the main difference here, though, is that their fusion materials are some of the best in the game, and that's exactly what we're here to take advantage of. The other thing about the Lionels, too, is that when you mount them, it used to be that you can hit them a bunch of times. That's changed a little bit. I think it's relatively the same amount of damage that you do. But um, when you first mount them, you can hit them up to six times if you have enough stamina to do it. But then all subsequent mounting attacks is going to only allow you to hit them three times. So take, just be aware of that. Fighting Lionels is a very, very intimidating prospect, but don't worry, you guys got autosave. You can go ahead and take advantage of that. Oh boy can't see. Oh man, I couldn't even see because of the, the leaves. Okay, what have we got for weapons now? Mm. I 
Okay. Then once you mount them, immediately switch over to your blue Boko Blade. Now, this is where the Royal Guard's Claymore comes in handy, because hitting them during a mounting attack is not going to um, consume any durability whatsoever, so you are good to go. Also, I should probably buff, shouldn't I? Alright, what are we going to use? We're going to use the Milk. I'm going to jump off quickly, because I don't have enough stamina to hold on. Hit him with that parry. Then immediately mount again, switch over to the blue vocal blade and only hit three times. As soon as you hit three, don't try to hit a four time because you'll do a uh, falling attack. And that'll do more damage. Again, switch over to the Boko Blade. You're not consuming any durability for fighting these guys. That's the thing. Hmm, couldn't quite catch the updraft in time. That's alright. Yeah, don't get, a don't get too mashy with the mounting attack simply because you'll end up doing a falling attack and that's going to consume a lot of durability. Okay, so we got ourselves a fair amount of upgrades. So let's quickly look at the loot that we got. We got the Lionel gear. So that is going to be the Saber Horn and the Mace Horn. The Saber Horn is the most powerful one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop this. Then go over to my blue Boko Blade. Destroy the Fuse Material. Fuse that. And all of a sudden we find ourselves with a 100 and it's hit, it's 108 attack power weapon. Ugh. Almost true to my words there. And also another thing to consider too is that you could upgrade the blue Boko Blade. Let's do that real quick actually. And then I'm going to switch over to the Lionel Mace material instead. Give ourselves even more damage to brag about. There we go. So as you can see, this is now a 29, but if we're down to one heart, it'll become 58. Okay. So, the next thing to point out is going to be, uh, uh, you're going to head over to the Natel Wetlands. Now, I did, I should have mentioned, or maybe I already did mention, but uh, you want to unlock the Highland Stable first and go to the Utsushak Shrine. Full disclosure, the Lionel that I have is upgraded. The upgraded Lionel is a result of, one, killing Lionels as to a score system, killing bosses is going to add to that as well, and I progressed a little bit in the main story. This basically just means that um, the, the, uh, the Lionels will go up in tiers, so from a blue Lionel to a white Lionel, and then presumably from a white Lionel to a silver Lionel. Uh, that just means that it's gonna be a lot easier when you guys have to fight against it, but for me, I'm gonna fight against it, but also to kind of, uh, support the method that I'm bringing to you guys, I'm gonna be fighting the Lionel after this, which is much harder not using the upgrade weapons that I got. I'm gonna be pretending that you guys are gonna be getting the mighty Lionel bow. I'm gonna end up getting a savage Lionel bow from this enemy, but I will not use it. I will only use, uh, the, uh, the Lionel bow that we got from the red Lionel that we just fought. Okay, so now that we are close to the Lionel, we're going to quickly just demonstrate. Um, I'm going to use another attack buff, simply because it took quite a while for me to get here. Uh, yeah, let's uh, go ahead and use this one. If you need to, feel free to cook up some more. Search for some more bananas if you need to. Remember, being prepared is the most important thing here. Okay, so how are we going to open this up? Let us use... Lionel Smasher. Then hit as many times as you can. Okay, so now we are down to one heart. This is great for us. This is great for us because now we are going to do more damage with the knight weapons, which is always good. Remember, as soon as you see three hits, stop attacking. Hmm, missed, missed the chance on that one. Okay. 
always keep your shield up, because even if you miss the dodge, you're still gonna do... You're still gonna survive. As you can see, I'm only down to a quarter heart and I'm doing okay. Okay, and always remember to switch back. You always want to be in a position where you can line up a headshot as soon as possible. So again, do some more damage. Alright, and just like that, he is down. And like I said, in the purpose of fairness, I'm not going to be using this guy's equipment for when we fight against the actual White Lionel, because I didn't even use the Savage Lionel bow. I, I, I didn't even use the, the regular Lionel bow, rather. Let's go ahead and drop... You know what, while I'm here, I might as well just drop this. So no, let's drop the one that, that doesn't have an effect. There we go. And we're going to drop the Soldier Bow. Like, I did mention that it was completely pointless for us to have the, um... It was completely pointless for us to have the... Um... What's it called? Additional bows, but we're gonna get it. Okay, next up is the Rebello Wetlands. Now, the thing is, uh, I did mention the Traveler's Medallion. The thing about the Traveler's Medallion is that it requires a lot of running around in order to acquire it. That being said, if you guys have it, this would definitely be a place to start using it. Basically, for those of you guys that don't know, the Traveler's Medallion can be found in the Akala Laboratory in the far northeast. You need to fight against a bunch of enemies, pick up the medallion, and then once you do that, the um, you have to do Josha and Robbie's quest in the Lookout Tower, or in the Lookout Point. And once you finish off with that, then you will send Robbie over to Hateno. Then Robbie is going to ask you to do a bunch of like stuff to unlock the rest of his laboratory. And then one of that is going to be acquiring the full function of the Traveler's Medallion. And then the more towers that you unlock, the more spots you can warp to with your Traveler's Medallion. So it's very useful overall. Okay, again, you just want to make sure that you kind of veer yourself into the direction on the map that you guys are looking at right now. Uh, because I only have one wheel of stamina, I have to be a little bit more careful about it, but as long as you have the tower, you guys should be good to go. Okay, so now we're over here, right over by the line I'm going to quickly buff myself, just so that I don't run out. And the thing about this particular fight as well, like I said, I didn't want to use the, um... The Lionel equipment, you guys, since you probably have already fought a blue Lionel, you can go ahead and use that. It's going to make the fight a lot easier for you. But this particular fight, it's um, one of the ones that are so out of the way that it might be a good idea to just spend your... It might be a good idea just to go ahead and spend... Spend your uh, Traveler's Medallion. Alright, now that we're on... 108 attack power... Jump off on the fifth one because I don't have enough stamina for this. If you guys aren't good at doing the perfect parry, no need to worry, because the um, you could just back you can just backflip most of these attacks, and it'll still put you in a decent position to do the um, the headshots, which is the most important thing. I'm not even using the Lionel bow, so you can actually just save that durability too if you think that'll make it easier. I probably should though, just for the purpose of for the purposes of time. Hello, Rice. Again, always keep the shield up, even if you miss the dodge. Even if you miss the dodge, you'll still avoid damage. Oh, he held on for a lot longer than I expected him to. Like shotgun blasts. Okay, improved Flurry Rush from Boss Buckle Blade. This should actually be enough to finish. 
There we go. All right, so now I can finally start to take advantage of the benefits of the uh, White Lionel stuff. So the White Lionels, they give some of the best stuff available. Uh, in particular, there is the Saber Horn, which unfortunately I didn't get. I got it in a previous run, but um, yeah, sometimes they'll drop the Saber Horns, but because you're fighting against two of them... Oh, never mind, no, I got the Saber Horn. Perfect. This is going to be great then. Let's throw away... I want to keep the Despo just because I think it looks cool. Steel Lazalbo has served us well, but we won't need it anymore. And I'm going to throw away the Soldier's Claymore. And this is where the fun begins. Destroy the Fuse Material. And then I'm going to fuse it with this weapon. And look at that. 152 damage. This is going to be insanely, insanely useful for what for what's for, uh, for what's to come. All right. And actually, if you want, you can also just use the saber horn for this one. Why not? The Royal Claimer is also going to get it. That is a respectable 600 um 61 and during a flurry rush it's going to do double damage, which is incredibly good. And let's see. We got ourselves do we have any knights armor. Okay, let's use the knights claymore. Destroy this and instead Fuse it with the Mace Horn. And taking advantage of the bonus, that is 102, which is also insanely good. So, we have a minute and 31 seconds for the attack buff. Obviously, if you guys have multiple, you guys will be just fine. We're going to go ahead and head over to the White Lionel that's over in this area, just overlooking Ploymus Mountain. And here we are. Oh yeah, you know what? Why don't we just use the Savage Lionel Bow for this fight too? Oh, okay. So I won't be able to take advantage of the uh, the single heart, but that's okay. Because we can still take advantage of the Savage Lionel Bow. Make sure you switch the correct weapon. There we go. Just in the nick of time, the, the attack buff literally just ran out. But that's the thing, though. As long as you have a good stack of bananas, then you guys should be good to go for that as well. And we got ourselves another Saber Horn to our name. And honestly, that would be perfect on a Knight's Broadsword due to the damage buff that you get, or that I could have gotten. So let's go ahead and fuse that right now. And do you want for the bows? Let us throw away one more Steel Lozal bow. And then finally, get ourselves get ourselves this saber horn, and then fuse it with the knight's broadsword. And this is going to be a one insanely powerful weapon for fifty-one damage, and that it'll become a hundred and two damage when you're down to one HP, which is very very easy for me because I only got four hearts. I'll talk a little bit more about Knight's equipments, but yeah, generally speaking, being able to combine the fusion effects with the weapons and the new effects that they have is really going to go a long way. This game's a lot easier when you're able to fully take advantage of those, and similarly to Breath of the Wilds, as long as you know where things are, and if you know where to find things, then you're going to have a great time with it. And remember, because all of these things are either dropped from monsters or found on the ground, they will respawn every time you find a Blood Moon. So every couple of hours, remember these locations, watch this video again if you have to. Hope you guys enjoy, take full advantage of the powers that this game is giving you, and that all the challenges that you face will be able to um, be like just a distraction, really. All the stuff that you do in this game will be so much easier as a result of following the guide that I have. Like I said, just to quickly recap, what do you want to do? Just quickly go over to the lookout landing, 
take the tower, fly your way into the castle, get your stuff when you're over there. You also may want to consider buying some ingredients like milk over at the lookout landing too. Once you finish that, head to all these Lionel locations and then you will be able to do just fine. It's also worth pointing out that in this particular region, there's a lot of bananas that spawn, and after a blood moon, remember, everything respawns, so you can farm a lot of bananas this way as well. So guys, thank you very, very much for watching this very long-winded guide video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, this was a lot of fun to make, and I hope you guys enjoy kind of just abusing your powers here. There's a lot of fun power creep that happens from the jump from Breath of the Wild to Tears of the Kingdom, and honestly, this might just be the tip of the iceberg, you guys. You'll never know. There might be even more insanely powerful stuff that we'll find in our journeys because this game literally came out less than a week ago and there's so many more things for us to discover. So uh, yeah, enjoy. Enjoy your newfound strength and be sure to take it forward as you just face the day with some newfound courage. Take care, everybody.